I'm David Griffin, it's the 8th of February 2018. I'm here in the dressing rooms at Derbyshire County Cricket Club and I'm talking to Callum Broderick, Alex Hughes. Lovely. Thanks once again, chaps. Um, what I want to focus on this time is really the, the future, where we go from here. We've talked previously about your upbringing in cricket and about uh, the, the, where you've got to. Um, if we just start with you, Alex, you're now a cap player, you're an integral part of the side, you average 40 with the bat, scoring 800 runs, top the averages last year. So you've kind of set a benchmark, a standard now for, for, for going forward. You're in, you know, a, a first pick in all formats. You had a good T20 campaign, including six over the media centre. Um, where, where do you see now, having got to that stage as an established county player with a county cap, where do you go from there? Um, yeah, it's a good question. It's Again, for me, I don't target runs or anything. I never really have, I think. I think it's probably because of the first couple of years I played here, we played on some of the greenest tracks ever produced at Derbyshire, and it wasn't. It was very low scoring, and I remember Shiv Chanderpaul saying it's impossible to bat out of there, and it's not the greatest thing you want to hear when you're coming in next to bat when one of the best batsmen ever is saying it's impossible to bat. So originally, I, my my targets were quite low. They weren't. I didn't expect yeah. to get hundreds on debut and, and whatnot, but. Now it's the same thing as it is last year. I, I, my target last year was to play every game, and then if I played every game, I must have been doing something right for the team. So that will be my target again this year. And if we can get the team closer to a like in a small quarterfinals or closer to a promotion race and the four-day stuff, then that will be my main target. Callum, you're obviously because of age, etc., some way behind, but you've come through the same. Passed with the same pathway, played second eleven cricket, you've played club cricket, you've played academy cricket, but you've now made your debut. Um, where do you see yourself going? You're now on the staff as a, as a contracted player. What, what are your ambitions going forward? Well, like you said, it's just about establishing, establishing, establishing yourself as a, a first team player. Um, I don't really have sort of set goals, like you said. I want to play this amount of games, I want to score this amount of runs. But I would like to sort of make my breakthrough and sort of cement a place in across all forms really. Don't want, really want to target say specifically T twenty or the longer format. I want to play as much cricket as I can for the first team and sort of develop my game. What what do you think? You're talking about game development, what are you do you how do you see yourself as a batsman in terms of your strengths and, and where you you know you're a power hitter, do you see yourself as a stylist? What, what's your Yeah, view I've never yourself? really been a power hitter um, or touch and, and running hard. That's one of my like, strengths, hitting outfielders and pushing twos and threes. Mm. Not so, not that I can't hit boundaries, I can, but it's not. that's something I'm trying to work on this yeah. winter to sort of merge with my uh, running between wickets and touch. Yeah. Alex, I mean, you've, you've, you've got kind of numerous strings to your bow because on the one hand you're seen as a very tough and obdurate and determined batsman and then other times you play the most sparkling kind of innings and powerful innings. You obviously like that kind of stuff, but how, how do you see yourself as a, as a batsman? What style of batsman do you um, see yourself as? Yeah, probably some, someone who can do a bit of everything. I, I, again, growing up and playing my first few years on very green wickets at Derby, sort of learned that a uh, sort of way of surviving and batting for quite a long time on not great wickets so um, I think my technique kind of just went a bit crabby and and just tried to squirm my way as many runs as I can but yeah. um, the more I've become confident is the more on some days when it is going right for me and I just go with it and however I'm feeling on the day is how I play really so I could be trying to go out a run of all some days and, and not trying to but just happens and then other days I'll be 20 off 100 and I'll still be happy with that because yeah. it's annoying the hell out of some bowlers which I can't find quite pleasurable. Yeah. You mentioned a few comments ago about the, the you know you want more of the doing well in the competition where the quarter final in the, the, the T20 last year. Um, what's it like for, you, for the two of you young lads that have come up through the game to find yourself, for example, you played in the match at Trent Bridge last year, gates locked, 16,000 people there. What, what is that like? Are you aware of the, the crowd and the noise and the, the, sh the heckling? and the? It, it, what's it like? Yeah, that, that, that was an amazing game. I, I just remember going out to bat and it was quite a close game. We did, what, 30 off, two and a bit overs or something like that. We didn't quite get over the line, but I just remember walking in. I'm just, and that, It happened about two years before as well. 
I remember walking out twos before and thinking, yeah, this is this is stupid. Like I'm I'm so nervous here. I'm I'm probably not ready for this. And then even though I didn't win the game for last year, which I would have liked, I thought I could. Um, it was no nerves. It was more excitement. It was more like I'm ready to do this. And I went in with a different mindset. So I think. Yeah, the more you play, the more comfortable you feel with with crowds like that. But it was so much better playing in front of sixteen thousand people. It was that was that was an incredible game. And you, you Carol, because you're very young to be in front of yeah. that sort of huge crowd and on a boundary. Yeah, I was the, the, the whole of the game. Yeah, okay. um, and yeah, yeah, it was. I'm well, not yeah. deliberately in these interviews trying to <laughs> raise the point to make Was that the one where the ball went that way and you went the other way? I think it was the wet surface and just spun the wrong way and. Yeah, I went to pick the ball up in front of the uh, the crowd and they heckling me, calling me Chez from Coronation Street. <laughs> really? <laughs> Chucky, all sorts. Really? Yeah. But no, it was, uh, I, I laughed it off. Yeah, it was, it was a bit daunting going out, but once you, once the game gets underway, it's, yeah, it's special. I remember John Morris saying, batting in, a, in, in county cricket or even test cricket, so it's the same as doing it at any other level you've ever done it at before, there's just more people there. Uh, which I always thought was quite an interesting take on it, but John was that kind of character yeah, who, who would do that. But it must be fun when there's more people there, it must be. Definitely, especially yeah. when you win it. Yeah. yeah. I think when we got, it's not 16,000, but when we had quite a few people there, I remember the Worcester game last year, we yeah. had to win to, to go through. Yeah, because you were at the wicket with, with Wayne, weren't you, when, when the game finished? Was that no, Worcester no, no, no. or that that the last game? Place, uh, when we had to qualify last year for the T20, the last game. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. And we, we only got what, one. one Thirty, was it? Yeah. We struggled, and just remember, it. I was so nervous. I was like, "We've, we've effed, we've effed this up." You know, we've, we, have, we had a great we've blown it. going through, <laughs> and then we bowled unbelievably. And just remember the crowd every wicket, and yeah. it's just the buzz you get from it. It's brilliant. Yeah, it was interesting because, of course, we brought John Wright in, didn't we? This year, so you've, you've got people like Kim Barnett around who've, who've won trophies, who've seen it all and done it before. And you just hope some of that magic rubs off. Um, what I'd like to ask you about now, really, is, is just what is, what is it like being a county cr cricketer in the modern age? Because, of course, with the greater respect now, you don't need to have another job. I mean, I know you can, if you want, be looking at elsewhere. But you, you're all round year-round cricketers now, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah. so, so how do you, you, you work on your fitness, you work on skills, or what, yeah. what do you do during the winter? Um, so, this has been my first year. I uh, found out that sort of before Christmas it's more fitness-based. Yeah. Um, Really trying to get your sort of base level fitness to a decent standard before you go into sort of really hard skill sets yeah. after Christmas. Um, but still, sort of, we're still at the gym two, three times a week even now. So it's not just forget about the fitness after Christmas and focus on skills. It's sort of it does take it out. Yeah. And are you looking at analyse? Do you analyse it because there's so much analysis now? Do you analyse your technique? Do you talk about your technique and? Do you, or are you just you, you're comfortable with what you've got and you kind of just want to build on that? How do you? Um, it's, go about I think it, it depends what what point you are in your career. I think someone like Mads, he's not going to go and radically change his his te technique, but it's always a case of trying to improve yourself. I think if you don't sort of finish your season and think what can I do better or mm. what I've done well, you've got to look at it both ways. But if you don't do that, I, I think you you're not going to improve as a cricketer and you're not going to move forward because people will work you out in a mm. second so you play a couple of years I, I knew that I knew how people were trying to get me out and I couldn't stop it at the start of my career because really? I'd not, I'd not analysed my technique in as much depth as I would now so for me to start this year it was about how I'm going to get better and it wasn't sort of resting on my laurels and thinking my technique was great because it's still got things to improve yeah. on so it's about working even harder really I think than previous years. Yeah. And in terms of your experiences so far, who are the players that you've come up against that have, you've either admired the most, with bat or ball, uh, and the ones that have given you the, the biggest kind of headaches, or the, you know, the, the ones that you've thought, oh dear, not him again. Anybody in particular? Um, I played a second team game last year at Harrogate against Yorkshire's twos, and um, it was Cybottoms last year before he retired. And even then, he, he wasn't bowling quick at all, but he had me a knots in a red ball game, swinging it both ways, just doing a bit off the seam, and I just, I thought, I'm never going to support that. I, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to find this next ball, never mind the next session. So that was probably the biggest headache I've had in recent times. Yeah. It's retired now, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I know. What about you, Alex? 
Uh, I'm not going to say anyone who crushed okay, so, Yeah, we don't want to give them. I'm going to jinx myself and I'll yeah. probably get ahead to them in the season. But there are a couple. Um, I remember facing Graham Runyon's in the, one of my first games. I, I know he's still playing, but I remember facing him in my first games. And, and he, uh, he, I was definitely his buddy. Um, he, I, I didn't understand how to play him at all. He was different level. And that probably wasn't even in his palm. But yeah. it was, he was still very good at that point. But... Yeah, he was uh, pretty special. Of course, you do some bowling. So, any particular batsmen that have given you headaches over the years? Um, yeah, plenty. I've, <laughs> I've not got many wickets. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. But in terms of, I've played with some great batsmen now. So, we've been really lucky to play with Hashim Amla and Chanda Paul. So, just playing with them too and learning different things from them. I'll take things for the rest of my life from, from them. Really? What about you, Callum? Players that you admire particularly, you know, obviously as a batsman, probably so pick another batsman. Um, not someone that I played with, someone that I sort of try to model myself on. Really admires the way he bats, is Sammy Cara, Just watching him, the way yeah. he makes it. Picked up, a so good, easy. picked a good yeah. one to to admire there. So yeah, he's probably someone that I would say I admire very highly. Yeah. Sort of. And, and, and outside of cricket, just interested, because obviously you're all year round cricketers now and you haven't got to go off and be a teacher or a, you know, whatever. What do you, have you got plans or do you do other things that, that you sort of uh, one eye on the future or you're just going to let things take the course, Alex? Um, yeah, well, the PCA um, try and push us in that direction to have sort of a, a backup for what you can do after cricket. Um, I've probably looked over it a bit too much because I'm very much on cricket at the moment and I probably shouldn't be, I probably should have other things but this last year I thought a lot more about it and uh, whether it's going to be coaching or doing recruitment or anything I've got, I've got one eye on it, I'm just waiting for something to really sort of take my eye and something I'm going to be interested in in the future and yeah. when I do that I will put a lot of effort in, in the winters for example when we have time and maybe do work experience or, yeah. or whatever it may be. Well, it's early to be asking a young man, of, you know, what, but, but do you have plans? Yeah, do, you, um, do you look outside well, again? Still doing a, a coaching course at a college coaching course. I've been really? so I don't have to be there, but um, I can just send work in assignments. So it's quite handy. Um, yeah, so and I'll have a coach in the future. And and to to close, um, you both come through the academy system, and I'm fascinated to know: is there anybody? Is there a one to watch or two to watch or Anybody to watch out for that's that's uh, like a young Callum at nine years of age scoring hundreds? Some, anyone we should be looking out for? In 30 years' time, somebody will be watching this video, you see, and they'll say, he went on to play to England or did that lad go on? So who's your picks then? Anyone that you... Well, Callum probably knows me. <laughs> um, I don't know many of the current academy, to be honest, because it's all changed the, the sort of structure of it. I can say my little brother is 13, he's playing in the age groups now. He's, mm. he's a decent old lad. Yeah. You two might go and play for England yourselves. Well, I think Callum's got a better opportunity than I have. But yeah, it's you never know. Like I said, he's for his age, he's in a very good position, a lot, a lot further ahead than where I was. Mm. So I'm sure if he works hard, that he's got he's got a big chance. How do you manage the structure of the game? What's your view of it? Because we get a lot of talk about the games, this, the games, that, the games, the other. But not a lot of people always ask the people that play it. What what what's your thoughts on the? format of the game, the amount you play and, and what have you? Um, yeah, it's, it's a good question. I think I think last year they did it, it was the best year of, of when I've been playing. I, I know the year before it was, it was too much cricket and it just felt that wasn't, the standard wasn't good enough because you had to... Are you saying this because last it year it was more compartmentalised? We had the eight 50 over games in a block? The majority yeah, exactly. of the yeah, twenty twenty. I mean, yeah. So yeah. like the year before we were going in, in and out of T twenty, yeah. fifty overs, four day games and it was so hard to, to play as a, yeah. as a cricketer. And I think they've they've managed it a lot better this year. It'd be interesting to see what happens with the new T twenty competition. Mm. Is that more your mindset sort of sort of switching from what Yeah, it's hard. Like. It's really hard, like like we we'd have a twenty twenty on a Friday night and then the Saturday day the ne literally the next morning didn't we at some time. Happened at so Hove. Yeah, we went from Northampton to Hove, didn't we? That, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a full day again. Yeah. So it's just it's just ridiculous, really. You can't ex expect a high quality of product if you're yeah. um, you're doing that. Um, but yeah, so with a new T20, then I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. But it's it's got its good and bad points. Um, mm. For the players, I guess it is good because it's a chance of more money if, if we're honest. Isn't it? But I know 
some people won't like it. Yeah. And I, I can understand why. And you both played pink ball cricket. You made your first class debut in it. You played at, um, at Cardiff in the game that we won uh, yeah. against Glamorgan. What's your take on pink ball and floodlit cricket? Okay. Yeah, I think, thought it was. Um, the ball gets sort of soft and doesn't really do much for bowlers. If I was a bowler, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't like to play it. But um, there was problems under lights as well with a little bit of dew. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something that I'd like to play as a batter. Yeah, I, I, I really liked it. It was something new, and I think cricket is, it can get boring. So just that little bit of change and knowing you can. You're playing against the pink ball, you're playing at nine. I think it was quite a good little thing. Not, to, I wouldn't play more than one game a year, but just for that one game a year, I thought it was a good idea. Well, gents, uh, it's been a pleasure to hear what you've got to say. I really do wish you both the very best. And, and the great thing about doing this project is so many of the people we talk to, it's about cricketing memories looking back 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and what's fascinating is we've, we've got a modern take on the game. Uh, but no doubt in years to come people will look back and think, oh, that's them two that, that did this, that or the other. So I wish you both the very best and I appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Dave. Thank you. Thanks,